Hi, I'm Patty Kennedy, an artist in schools with the San Joaquin County Office of Education. And during this coronavirus outbreak, I'm staying home and safe with my art supplies and a stack of books to read. And of course, I'm looking at the birds that fly over my backyard. Today, I thought we would make a stained glass inspired piece of artwork using supplies that we can find around our homes. And I'm being inspired today by Tiffany stained glass lamps. So these are very old lamps. Uh, they were status symbols. These were made between the 1880s through about 1920. And the black lines are metal between pieces of glass. Here's a detail of a piece of Tiffany stained glass, one of the dragonfly lamps designed by this artist, Clara Driscoll. And you can see the different pieces of glass. Each piece of glass, after it gets cut out, has to be wrapped in metal. So this has some copper around it. And this also has some metal around it. The design would get set up within a frame and then a soldering tool is used to melt the metal a little bit so it acts like glue and holds things together. We're not going to be that complicated. But we do need to gather up our supplies. We're going to have to make a paper frame or cardboard frame for our stained glass piece, and we need to have a special kind of paper. We need paper that is translucent or semi-transparent. You can see light through it, but you won't be able to see shapes very clearly through it. So I've decided to see what I have in my house that I can use. And I like using parchment paper for my kitchen for this. So I could use parchment paper. I could use wax paper or I could use tracing paper. You might find some paper around your house that is translucent. And if you can't, try and see if you can get some wax paper or parchment paper. Ask for some help getting that. You can also get this at the dollar store. So I've got my paper. I need to have a permanent marker, like a Sharpie in a dark color, so it needs to be black or brown or even a dark green, so I've got that. I have my glue stick. I need construction paper or a clean cereal box to make my frame. And I have some construction paper here to do that. For colors, I'm going to use permanent markers or oil pastels or crayons. I think oil pastels are my favorite. So I have my supplies together, and I did prepare by making a design on paper, just a nice quick sketch. That's what I want to do. I'm going to do a dragonfly. But the first thing I need to do is make my frame. So I'll explain how this goes together. So I've got a frame here. And here I have the artwork I made to go in there. And it's actually like this. This is the side that the Sharpie gets used on. And then I'm going to color on this side so that when I close it up, the color is protected in there. And then I will glue it into the frame that I make. Okay, so my first step is, I have a design, so that would be my first step. I know what I'm going to do. So the next thing I need to do is make my frame. So let me show you the easy way I'm going to make my frame. I have my construction paper right here. I'm going to fold it in half this way. I'm going to make sure the edges are lined up, up there. I'm going to hold it here. I'm going to go down this way, and then I'm going to go that way and this way. And then I'm just going to make it nice and crisp. So there I have it folded. 
I've already decided that this is how big I want my opening to be. And if I'm doing several of these and I want the opening to all be the same size, I'm just going to cut out the shape I want to use as my pattern, my template. I think I will do it this way. I've got that on my paper. I'm going to trace that rectangle. And then I'm going to make an X in it so I have an idea about where the middle of my paper is. And I'm just going to grab a marker so you can see. I'm going to make a dot there. That's about the center of my rectangle. So sometimes people just poke their scissors through the paper to cut that, but I'm going to be a little more careful about that. So I have a phone book here that's nice and thick. I could use a magazine and I have a thumbtack and I'm going to stick that thumbtack in the paper and then I'm going to use my pencil to make that hole in the paper a little bit bigger. And then the fastest, neatest way for me to cut this is now I put my tip of my scissors in there and I'm going to cut to the corner. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to cut to this corner. And then I'm just going to cut along that line. And I'm cutting through both sides of the paper at the same time. That way the sides are pretty even. I'm actually going to do this because that's going to make it easier for me to come up here and cut it like that. Now you might find something around your house that is already looking like a frame and if you want to use that go ahead and use that. But there, I have my frame. And I want to get my frame cut first so that I know how big my paper needs to be to be in there. So I have my paper frame. Now I said you could use a cereal box to do that. I didn't have any cereal boxes, but I had an empty box of tea. So this was the outside of the box. I folded that in half and then I just cut out that rectangle shape the same way you saw me do it with the construction paper. So I have my frame and I've decided what kind of paper I want to use. Today I'm going to use parchment paper from my kitchen so I took some of the parchment paper but now I need to fold it in half. And you see how it rolls up like that? I'm going to make that the inside so I'm just going to See, I'm going to make sure it fits. I want to make sure it's going to be tall enough. Will it be tall enough? Yes, it will. Okay, it's going to be tall enough and wide enough. So I'm just going to fold it and make a nice sharp fold there. And before I do anything else, I'm going to put it back in here. Will it fit in my frame? Uh-oh, some of it's hanging off. Do you see that? Has some of it's hanging over here? So I'm just going to make it easy on myself and I'm going to cut off some of that extra. And I'm going to check again before I do anything else. Will it fit? It will fit. So I've decided that this is the design I want to do. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put it inside my translucent paper. Let's see if I like the way it's placed. I like that. Okay, so I'm going to put my frame to the side. And this is where I'm going to use my Sharpie. I'm going to 
outline my design. And if I'm a righty, I'm going to start on the left side. If I'm a lefty, I'm going to start on the right side. That way, it's less likely that I'm going to smear my marker because we are using parchment paper or wax paper, it takes a minute or two for that Sharpie to dry. And if I'm moving around on my paper with my hand, I might smear it. Okay, so I've got that part done. I'm going to come down and do this wing. Okay. And I do want to make those lines touch one another. There we go. So I'll take that out. See, I have a simple design, so it doesn't take a long time for me to outline it. So here's the Sharpie. Now I'm going to open up my paper, and I'm going to color on this side. I'm going to use oil pastels because I have them right here and they get a lot of color down without having to use a lot of pressure. I'm going to use warm colors on my dragonfly and I'm going to use cool colors on the background. That way it will make the dragonfly look like it is closer to me. Warm colors bring things towards you. Cool colors move them away from you. Another thing that I'm doing is I'm holding my paper with two fingers spread like that. That way I don't have the paper jumping up. This paper is thin and sort of flimsy, so if I don't hold it down, I'm probably going to have it crinkle and wrinkle on me, and I don't want it to do that. Give this guy some red eyes and some red spots there. So my dragonfly is colored in, and I'm going to put some blue here because that's what I feel like doing. I'm using the side of my pastel for big areas, and then I can come in and use the tip of it for smaller areas where I don't have as much room to move my pastel around. But if I can use it on the side and color in big areas quickly, that's what I'm going to do. So blue is a cool color and it will stay in the background against that yellow that is popping forward to meet me. And crayons also work very well on the parchment paper. They don't work as well on the wax paper. It takes a lot more work to make the crayons work on the wax paper. But you can make them work. You just have to work a little bit harder. Okay. Now those ribbony lines that I have coming down, I think I'm going to... Oh, I've got nice purple here. I think I'm going to some purple in there. Purple and yellow are opposite colors, so when they are near one another, they really grab your attention. I think I'm going to add some a different blue over that blue. Just a little different blue. It has a little more green in this blue. Okay, so there I've got it colored in, and now I'm going to do this. Here's my fold. I'm going to hold it up, and here is my frame. I'm going to check it before I do any gluing. So I'm checking it, and you know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing that I want to put some more blue there. I don't want it to be white there. So I checked it before I glued. Oh, 
Okay, I'm going to close it up again. Check it again before I glue. Okay, and now I'm going to glue. I like the way that looks. So I have my glue stick here. I'm going to start by putting some glue. I've opened up my frame. I'm going to put some glue here and here. And then I'm going to place my stained glass drawing here. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to put some glue here. So that stays together. And then I'm going to glue the edges. Put a little bit more down here. And then I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to smooth it out with my hands to make it as flat and smooth as I can. Okay. Now, if I like when I'm done with that, I can come over to the back and I can trace my outline again, if that's important to me. Okay. You could hang this in a window. This is a very nice thing that you could put in the mail and send it to somebody as a birthday card. I'm going to show you different ways that I made it. So this was wax paper with permanent markers here, and that, that worked pretty well. This was wax paper and crayon. It works, but it's, it, it takes a lot of work. You have to really use a lot of strength to color with that crayon on there. Using parchment paper and crayon is a little bit easier. If I had to use crayons, I'd use parchment paper because it just works so much better. You could also use the um, permanent markers on the parchment paper or the oil pastels. And let's see, this was done with oil pastels on wax paper. And this was also done with oil pastels on wax paper. And this is just a design that I copied out of a coloring book. I put my wax paper on top of the coloring book and I traced it. So I hope that inspires you for some creative ideas for what you can do with some paper around your house. Create some stained glass windows that you can hang up in your windows. Thank you so much for visiting The Locker. I hope this inspires you to create and have some fun with it. Thank you so much.